Retro shooters, or the more unflattering term, boomer shooters, are a somewhat recent video game trend. They are games that are trying to emulate shooters of the past, whether it be through graphics, gameplay, or style. These retro shooters have become increasingly popular in recent years, with more and more popping up every year. I have found myself being sucked into playing quite a few of them, whether it be now established genre classics like Dusk and A Medieval, to newer entries like Dread Templar and Hrot. While these titles were all enjoyable, I soon found myself being drowned in an endless sea of them, forcing me to become quite picky with the ones I want to play. With all of this overwhelming choice, I found choosing my next title difficult, but eventually, out of the endless sea of retro shooters, one game rose from the waves and caught my eye. That one shooter was Sprawl. I have a general preference for full 3D style of retro graphics from such titles as Quake, Half-Life, and Unreal. Sprawl emulates this style effectively. Sprawl is set in a dystopian cyberpunk world where man has been overtaken by the advancements in machines and artificial intelligence. The golden age of humanity's technological progress is long over and the spark that ignited the fire has long since gone out. What remains is a broken world, cracking and crumbling under the weight of it all. This is compounded by an oppressive and brutal military dictatorship, stamping out any fires of resistance in the vast urban city known as the Sprawl. You know, your usual cyberpunk stuff. You play as Seven, a cybernetically enhanced super soldier. Seven is a former operative that worked for the military junta until she was kicked out in disgrace. Now on her own, a mysterious voice starts speaking to her. The voice, simply known as the Father, the father begins to guide her through the military junta's infested streets and back alleys of the sprawl. She'll have to cut a bloody path through the streets in hopes of reaching her ultimate goal, the spire. The game abruptly starts with you getting kicked off an apartment block by the game's main antagonist. You will immediately notice the stark cyberpunk visuals. The cyberpunk themes carry throughout the game's three episodes, each episode having a somewhat distinct look while staying true to the cyberpunk aesthetic, with episode 1, called Kogato Ergo 7, having visuals seemingly heavily inspired by Ghost in the Shell and Hong Kong. The first level of episode 1 is literally called The Walled City. It's an on-the-nose reference to the Kowloon Walled City that used to exist in Hong Kong. The game effectively emulates the Kowloon Walled City, with its tall apartment blocks crammed tightly together with very little room to breathe, to its dimly lit back streets with only the odd neon sign lighting the garbage covered floor. Its choking atmosphere is represented well in the game and makes for a surprisingly interesting level design. The tall buildings with their rooftops and large signs complement the wall running aspect of the game, allowing you to satisfyingly hop between tightly packed buildings and dash over rain soaked rooftops, getting you used to the game's mechanics in the earlier levels. While the game is able to capture the cramped environments of a tightly packed city, it also doesn't shy away from showing you the more open areas that showcase the game's great art direction, letting you take in the vast urban sprawl of the city with all of its little details. Sprawl nails that industrial urban decay feel with all of the nuances of the cyberpunk genre. Anytime I was playing the game and I thought, oh, this is a pretty cool area, I only had to look up and realise how much more there is to the world. You suddenly realise how small you are next to all of the high-rise buildings, and it's a nice way of putting the game world into perspective. As said before, a lot of the environments in Episode 1 reminded me of Ghost in the Shell, which was based off of Hong Kong and its lower city environments. Where the inspiration comes in the heaviest is in the later levels of Episode 1. More specifically, Level 5, called The Canals, which draws heavy inspiration from the canal scenes in Ghost in the Shell. Along with the area for the Level 5 boss fight being directly based off the area where the fight between the Major and the hacker known as Corgi takes place in the film. With both areas having a shallow pool of water surrounded by tall buildings on three sides and a large opening looking out onto the cityscape, the Ghost in the Shell inspiration doesn't stop there though. The military police enemy looks to be inspired by the police from Ghost in the Shell, and the elite infiltrator also looks similar to Corgi with his camo coat and submachine gun, although that design is a lot more original. The music is also heavily inspired, but that's something I'll get onto later. Ghost in the Shell doesn't seem to be the only anime inspiration for Sprawl. The heavy elite Oni squad looks very similar to the Kerberos police from Jinro, and there are a few references here and there to other anime. There's probably a good few I missed as well. 
These references are nice easter eggs if you pick up on them, and it's not like the game is trying to hide these particularly hard. The developers also openly admit to their influences on the Steam store page, so it's not like they're trying to hide that either. Episode 2, called Deus Ex Machines, switches locations and takes place in the military junta's main weapon factory. Episode 2 does have some interesting areas that make the factory seem larger than life, but it still kind of falls somewhat into the generic factory setting when you enter the corridors of the factory. Many of the corridors and smaller areas starting to blend together with the game's somewhat bland colour palette, save the brightly coloured lights. It's not terrible, but it feels uninspired compared to the previous episode. While the episode's levels are somewhat generic in terms of its setting, it does provide a nice change from the city and add some much needed variety to the game. The level design has also changed a bit from episode 1, with episode 2 focusing on smaller, more confined environments and arenas. It still features large open arenas for you to use your movement abilities and skills, but compared to episode 1, it's a lot less. I like this change as it changes up the gameplay and forces you to think a little bit harder about engagements. Instead of running and gunning, you have to think what's potentially waiting around this corner and what's behind this door, since the areas you are in are a lot more up close and personal than before. It's a nice change of pace as well, along with making you think harder about weapon choice and when to use the right weapon. These smaller arenas carry over into the next episode. With episode 3, called Simulacra and Revelations, changing up the level design and setting once again, episode 3 takes a more monolithic approach to its setting, with it being set in the Spire, the seat of power of the military junta. It towers above the sprawl below, reaching far into the sky, with its true size being obscured by the clouds. Its architecture reminded me of the Tyrell Corporation building from Blade Runner, having sharp angled edges to it, although it's a lot more lifeless and unwelcoming with its cold grey stone slabs. The initial visual design is great, and I loved how massive it seemed, but the actual visual design of the levels starts to get a little bit boring and dry the more it goes on. That is until the final level of the episode. The final level of the episode has a nice change of scenery, with it being a little different compared to the previous two levels. It's a lot more cybernetic, almost like being directly in the internals of a computer or a robot. But overall, I feel episode 3 is the weakest in terms of its art direction and visual design. It's just a bit too lifeless to the point where the grey becomes overwhelming and it's lacking that visual flair the previous two episodes had. Episode 3's level design does have a nice mix between big and small areas, which switches it up from Episode 2 and Episode 1. This once again changes how you play the game and manoeuvre around the levels. There is a lot more long range fights in this episode for the larger arenas, but these can easily be shortened quickly using good movement. These changes help keep the game fresh and stop it from getting stale. The mixing up of the level design between each episode aids greatly in the movement and gameplay mechanics. The core gameplay of Sprawl is great, especially when it combines its gunplay with its movement mechanics. The movement feels clean and smooth even when you're just running around or moving side to side. Then adding a wall running mechanic and a slide that gives you a small speed boost if used correctly and you can pull off some sick movement. The game rewards you for experimenting and pushing the movement mechanics to its fullest, allowing you to get to seemingly unreachable areas that could hold a secret with some goodies or giving you an advantage over your enemies, letting you easily run circles around them or turn a potentially unwinnable fight into a winnable fight. If you're good enough with the movement mechanics, you don't even have to take some fights. You can just run right past the enemies and skip the fight entirely. You can also skip sections of the levels as well by using the movement right, and I enjoy the freedom that the game gives you, despite how linear it can feel at times. While the movement is great overall, sometimes the jumping can feel a little bit floaty. It never was to the point where I felt like I was sliding on ice, however. The game is also pretty forgiving when it comes to you messing up your jumps and falling to your death, so if you struggle with the movement, you can keep trying as it doesn't take anything away from your progress. It just resets you to the closest platform you fell from, allowing you to easily get back into the action. Some people may have a problem with this, but I don't mind it, as it allows me to experiment with trying to get to certain locations that may seem off-limits, only to find that it isn't after a couple of tries. The game also has a bullet time mechanic called Adrenaline, which you can easily find as a pickup on the ground or as a drop from an enemy. Adrenaline is extremely useful as it can help you in a number of ways. You could be in the middle of a gunfight and use adrenaline to slow down and take a little bit of time to think about the engagement, or use that time to perfectly line up a headshot. It can also save you from falling when wall running, or just doing movement in general. Add all of these elements and mechanics together with the gunplay and it makes for some satisfying and enjoyable gameplay. Especially when you hit a cool multi-kill hopping off a building in slow motion, hitting headshots left and right. 
The core gunplay is a lot similar to other retro shooters, and it feels great to use all of the guns, especially when you kill an enemy and they explode into a cloud of red mist and gibbs. There's a decent selection of weapons, from your bread and butter revolvers, to more advanced weapons like the railgun. There is no bloat when it comes to the weapon selection, with all of them serving a purpose, and while you can use most of them on any enemy, some work better than others, especially on tougher enemies. The game starts you off with the revolvers, and spreads the rest of them out nicely throughout the whole of the game, slowly growing your arsenal of more and more powerful weapons. In response to all of the weapons the game gives you, the game also throws stronger and stronger enemies at you, with some of these enemies being introduced better than others. Killing these enemies effectively with the right weapon or a well-timed headshot rewards you with health, ammo, and adrenaline pickups. You could also use the pitiful melee option to quickly take out a stunned enemy, but outside of that it's like Doom's melee, as it sucks. Only being useful for the previously mentioned stunned enemy or on a low health enemy, luckily you will never have to rely on it as you often get an abundance of ammo for most of the weapons. The weapons do have interesting designs that fit into the cyberpunk style, even if some of them do look a little bit generic. Along with looking interesting, they also have great sound design, with all but one sounding meaty and impactful. The only one that doesn't sound meaty is the SMGs, which sound really weak and flat, and every time I hear them shooting it sounds like a BB gun. The game also has a nice little bit of ambience in areas, but sometimes I feel there is not enough. What really carries the game in the sound department is the music. The music is so good and one of the standout elements of the game, with the soundtrack having quite the mix of music. The best way I can describe it is it is a mix between traditional Japanese chants, drum and bass, breakcore, and heavy electronic music, and that sounds like an awful mix, but it actually works quite well. The music really gets you into the action, and there's so many good tracks to get the blood pumping. The music also helps fill the void that can sometimes be left with the little ambience that the game has at times. As soon as I heard the soundtrack, it reminded me of Ghost in the Shell's soundtrack, with its traditional Japanese chanting, but the Sprawl soundtrack takes it a bit further with mixing in those other music elements which fit into the game's tone and theme. Just like any indie game, there's bound to be some glitches and bugs here and there. I did encounter a few in my playthrough, but it was never game breaking, more of a mild annoyance. A couple of them made me restart from a checkpoint, but those checkpoints are fairly regular so it wasn't a deal breaker. You can potentially softlock yourself in the first level by not killing the soldier at the start and collecting the revolvers he drops. This is what happened to me the first time I played the game and I had to restart from the beginning. While that was my fault for not fully paying attention to the tutorial signs the first time, I do think it's something that should have been picked up on as a good number of people will just skip reading that stuff and get locked out like I did. I never crashed while playing so that's a plus and the game ran smoothly for the entire time I played it. The game is only about 4GB in size, which is great as I'm getting sick of these massive games taking up so much space. It should also be pretty easy to run and really shouldn't be a problem for anybody to run in this day and age unless you're on some really old or low end hardware. While the game overall is pretty great, I do have some criticisms. My first major criticism of the game is the enemy AI. Almost every enemy just charges straight for you. They never flank you or use grenades or anything to try and catch you off your guard. The only thing they do to try and catch you off your guard is sometimes they'll jump onto other objects or platforms to try and get closer to you, but even then it's very limited. It becomes very predictable when you know how every fight is going to go. A lot of the times when you die to enemies it is because you're overwhelmed or it's some dumb stuff like this. I think if the enemies had better AI or just did anything other than gunning straight for you, it would make the fights more interesting and keep you on your toes more. Another problem I have with the game is just how short it is. Clocking in at around 4.5 hours, it's a short experience, which is nothing new for these retro shooters, but because of how linear it is, it feels even shorter, so more variety to the levels would be welcomed. I also wish there was some more story, and while I know these retro shooters are not known for their stories, it seems Sprawl attempted to have one but it was never fully realised, with the story being the weakest part of the game. Like the military junta is supposed to be an evil military dictatorship but we hardly see any evil acts committed by them. There is more lore on these notepads that you can find around the levels by scanning a QR code, which is a cool idea but it takes you outside of the game, and unless you want to sit there and read them after you find them, you will probably skip reading them. You can look at them under the Codex tab on the home screen, but I never felt the motivation to look at them. 
In conclusion, Sprawl is an enjoyable experience and a decent retro shooter, adding elements to try and make it stand out from the rest. It's crafted an interesting cyberpunk setting that I wish I knew more about. The alright level design and decent gameplay carries it from being mediocre, on top of a superb soundtrack that really enhances the experience. If you enjoy these type of games, I recommend it, especially because it's not the most expensive game in the world and I would say it's reasonably priced for what it is. If you have reservations, I would recommend picking it up on a sale as it often goes for 50% off.